Elena uh, Yiblaje, uh, Deputy Director of Georgian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, she is an education policy expert with over 10 years experience in the areas of education system reforms in, in transition countries in the post-Soviet region. She holds professional exper expertise in the areas of quality assurance in higher education. Her research interests cover education quality, university autonomy, and the concept of engaged university. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, uh, Elena. Uh, we are looking forward to your presentation, and uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me, and thanks for the interesting topics that we are covering today. Just minor uh, correction there. I am deputy uh, director of the Diplomatic Institute rather than the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, Sorry, I'd say train. It's a training uh, institute there. Um, my uh, what I wanted kind of I when I was thinking about talking uh, here, uh, I was thinking which angle I should approach uh, the future university uh, challenge, so to speak. And probably what is more uh, dear to me uh, as a education researcher is still what is happening at the periphery where actually some processes are taking place at the uh, global or central more developed world. So I come from Georgia and uh, uh, since the collapse of Soviet Union, this is and we are kind of considered the periphery. And how do universities deal with being uh, in the periphery uh, still is uh, kind of the research is not there about it. And uh, I would like to share just a little bit of what's happening and how, what would a future university be like for the periphery in a way. Uh, my presentation is not going to be too long. There's going to be, it's more kind of a rudimentary uh, points that I would like to uh, share with you. Let me try and share the um, screen. Just a second. And if that doesn't work, I'll just uh, talk a little bit and that will be that. Do you see the screen shared? Uh, is it yes. the future university that is shared? Uh, yes. Can you yeah. just click the full screen, please? Yeah, I'll try now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it works. Thank so, you. That, uh, so how, uh, what is kind of, if we start to, uh, talking or if uh, my launching point here is that the university is world making. so. It is an engine to create or help to shape the society, right? And again, when I'm talking about these things, I'm always having some question in mind what is happening and whether the universities still have this role back in the periphery, back in Georgia or the countries like Georgia, right? And the challenge that the universities are uh, facing here is this dominant global discourse of what is a good or successful university or world class university and then what is relevant locally and within this challenge always and it's been two plus two and a half decades at least that universities are in the process of reforming here this uh, problem of putting together somehow global and local is permanent, which is kind of draining the energy, so to speak, of the universities. Uh, throughout these years, after the uh, collapse of Soviet Union, the uh, system, higher education system, is actually stuck in a chase. So this is a constant catching up with the Western world. What West is considering to be a good university. And this came 
as an idea, and basically we are chasing this concept of university as an academic and industrial complex, right? And this is a form rather than a content. And this is where the universities are stuck. So it's the brand expansion, accumulation of publications, ratings have become something that is very important, but it's still not known what, why. Focus of, on STEM has become very fashionable. And I'm using these words because, again, the content, why the STEM is important in the West and why it's becoming important or has to be important in the periphery is different still. Uh, extension programs are understood as something that the universities have to have as a matter of flexibility. So it's still kind of in making online classrooms as well, that it's still a trend and we need to catch up with it. Another catching up point that is there though, is also <clears throat> the idea of the liberal arts and transformation of the society through the critique. So if we look at these two as two types of universities, right? These two concepts are being collapsed and kind of proposed to the periphery. And here as well, we are stuck in a chase and kind of trying to catch up with the world, with the developed world. So democratic and participatory academy, there is a research in making now that says that the academic personnel, the self making of the academic personnel is this amalgam of Soviet post-Soviet identity and something of the modern. And they're trying to still make sense out of it, where this democratic and participatory part is very minute. Therefore, the challenge there is how to provoke the critical consciousness then, if this is the role of the university, and then how to support the student self-actualization. Right? So, if I may say, um, when we are uh, even in Central and Eastern Europe, there is a challenge put forward that there is a disconnect between the relevance of the university and uh, the reality. Still, it is still a slightly different than what is the challenge or the gravity of the challenge at the periphery. So the universities are not at all grounded in the context. And somehow there is a chase that is more of a chase of the discourse that of what is relevant and what is important now globally. This disconnect is very grave and therefore uh, the understanding of how the university can be part of or an engine for the societal transformation is missing. So, for instance, the universities do not participate in the debates of sustainable development or the environmental development or economic development. So, when Mr. Briggs mentioned then that there is this isolation, right, of, I don't know, economic development, cultural even, and whether universities participate in it, I think here the problem is that universities don't think that they should participate. So what to do with that? The inertia is, uh, is uh, the main modus operandi here. So what is it that the university, future university could be in the periphery rather than chasing the phantom of uh, globally successful universities, right? Uh, because the reality becomes distorted. We do not have much of the resources to be ranked high in the uh, rankings, but still the universities chase that phantom instead of redirecting the resources elsewhere. And what is elsewhere is kind of as if uh, an empty uh, concept there. No one can understand. And that kind of brings us to this third mission, right? i.e. how can universities contextualize themselves and be helpful within their own commune or the society or nation. So I guess the future university for the periphery is back to local. 
which is the focus that it is somehow avoiding. So accounting for the national or local reality is something that we need to focus on. Or, so um, I was glad to hear that in the Central and Eastern Europe, there is a possibility for the diversity. Periphery is very much overwhelmed with the global discourse. And uh, as so much that as if this diversity is not there. Bologna, for instance, has become something of a success story that we are somehow part of it now. And the critical understanding of it or critical uh, yeah, study of it is not there, right? So this is, again, because of the anxiety of catching up, that we have missed out on something and catching up is the best, that we just look into what is trendy now. So again, the universities at the periphery do have the capacity of looking into and creating the knowledge that is relevant locally to shape the knowledge that could be lo uh, relevant locally. And that would be the future of the university or the future university for Georgia or the uh, countries like Georgia. And I'm hoping that this is the moment where um, the global uh, processes or discourse has spread so much that it allows the diversity within. And then the countries in the periphery could kind of shape the policy and the universities can find this role of shaping the knowledge that is useful and relevant, informative for themselves and their future. Thank you.